Hey, what is going on guys? XD here back again with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to count bars. I know I've been doing a lot of videos showing you guys how to produce and also how to arrange your tracks. And I know I've been speaking about bars a lot. So it's only hit me now that I've never really officially you know, it helped some of you guys in understanding how it is to count bars. I know some of you might know this, but some of you might not know this. So this is my official how to count bars video. So I'm I'm going to try and go as much as I can with counting bars and also why it's good to know, you know, how to count bars because a lot of people and even artists that I, you know, get sometimes here, they don't know how to count bars and they just tell me time codes like, you know, in 30 seconds, that's when my chorus starts or in uh, one minute, that's when my verse begins or whatever but now as a producer you need to know how to count bars because we don't work with time so if i'm telling you that okay at this certain time you you can now you know uh, play your snare or you can add your hat or you can add this instrument it's going to be really hard to see that in the the you know the arrangement area here in fl studio or no matter what what DAW you're using because this also applies to any DAW, no matter what DAW you're actually using so um firstly a bar is basically um a bar is basically four beats, right? So if you if I load four kicks here like this, this is basically a bar. It's basically um, four kicks, but it's it, it's not just any random four kicks because I can add four kicks like this, right? So usually we use the metronome. So if I put on the metronome, my tempo is at 120 and I play like this. One, two, three, four. You see that? That's a bar. But if I change my metronome, I think to... Um, cowbell you can hear that the first cowbell has a higher pitch than the rest if you i think if you go into other uh, daws as well they have uh, the first uh, note is high pitched and the other ones aren't they are marking that that's your first note that's your uh, your first beat so um, the loop of beats, like in FL Studio, you only find um, here on the channel rack by default, you have um, this amount of a grid that is on here. So the color, the colors that you see here, because they have this brownish color and a gray color. So it's actually telling you that this is one, that's two, that's three, that's four. So in, a, in electronic music, usually uh, hip hop, uh, house music, EDM, we use a four by four time code, which is like four beats, four beats making a bar. So this one, two, three, four, that is a bar. Then we uh, restart again. So that's a loop. So that's basically how you can count bars. And if you come over here, if I add in that same um, that same one bar loop that I just made with just the uh, just the kick like that, you see it's from one to two. So now this is where two begins. So usually I tell you guys to um, add up until four bars, which is here close to five because this is where you can build your uh, your main progression of your track usually when you're making a progression of keys the progression is complete when it's like uh the length is four bars so let me make a quick prog progression here and show you i'm just going to play something random that's just to prove this point There we go. So some sim like that. Then it starts again. I'm just going to quantize it and drop it here. So as you can see, I actually played this um, this progression from one up until four. So this is four. So for every bar, there is a, a chord inside, as you can see here. So this is the length of a good chord progression when you're making music. No matter what type of style you're making, even if it's hip-hop, even if it's pop music, EDM, whatever, the loop of a proper chord progression is four bars. So that's why I always often tell you guys to compose your progression and compose uh, the bit of your music in that four bars, but knowing what actually a bar is. So whenever you're arranging, you need to know how many bars you're arranging at and uh, the intervals that you're going to be introducing your instruments in. Like usually, I always say that, you know, you can introduce your instruments uh, within uh, 16 bars because in hip hop, we know that um, 16 bars is the length of a verse. So let me just make this simple in terms of arrangement, how you can use bars to help you with your arrangement. So right now, uh, let's say you made this four bars and you're trying to arrange, right? All you just have to do is now duplicate this to 17, 17, which is here. I almost pointed with my finger, <laughs> such a habit. Um, so I'm going to duplicate that. Uh, Control B duplicates when you have something selected and have it highlighted red like this. So now I have 17. So now I know that 
if it plays from here to 17 i want so i want to add something else uh when it strikes 17 then i can just duplicate this or maybe let me uh put a transition before this and maybe just delete that that kick so that when it gets to that point then it comes uh back in again so what i can do is maybe you can add uh this roll when it comes back so then i'll just come here and duplicate it again and then now i have another um 16 bars again then i'll come back again duplicate the same 16 bars again and as you can see we're already a minute and a half you know so you keep uh, uh planning to introduce your sounds and your variations in this intervals of 16 bars but it's up to you it's not a rule set in stone you can always change this you can make it to uh you know 24 or whatever you want to you know you want to take it to but it has to be something within the four by four rule that we have so a, a basic a blueprint of a hip-hop track the arrangement using this time code is usually like uh um moving with the four bar rule is the first four bar can be your intro like this um this intro over here where you know it's just the keys that start in the beginning you can also do this in house music if you want to but it depends if you're going to have vocals or not, but in the case of vocals, so now I'm going to add this. So now your first chorus, if your song is starting with your chorus, is going to be eight bars. So we all know that a chorus is four bars, which is this duration over here. Um, and then the chorus is repeated a second time, which makes it eight bars. So then I can just duplicate that. Then from here to there, that's the chorus. But now when we get to the verse, the verse has to be 16 bars, which means we duplicate this two times. One, two. And that's uh, our verse. So I'm just gonna put a crash when um, the verse w when the verse starts, so that you can see when it's starting. That's over here. Oh wait, nope, over here. Okay, there we go. Then that's where the verse is gonna start. And then after that, after the verse, we know that it's gonna be our chorus again. So bring our chorus back let me just lower these so that you know there's kind of a difference there we go so that's the basic structure of a track and then to fill up the whole track we just duplicate that again then now we know that um this is our first uh, our first um chorus that's our first verse second chorus second verse and then uh third chorus and then we can put our outro or our you know, I'll end out at the end of the song. So depending with the length of your song, it also depends with, you know, how many bars you want to add on. So even right here in the beginning, I can add um, another another bar of the piano. And then there we go. So that's a full, that's a basic structure. So some songs do have pre-choruses that you can um, add, like maybe a pre-chorus before the chorus comes in or whatever so when it comes to house music it depends with what you want to do so you don't have to follow these rules of bars but i was just trying to you know help you guys understand exactly how bars work and as a producer how you need to understand how bars work because it also helps you even when you're djing because when you're djing you don't have uh, something that's counting bars for you you don't have um these numbers that tell you that this is one two three and four but all you just have is the music that you're listening to and a certain time so you cannot use that time in a track to know when to cue the next song but you can count beats in your head so all you just have to do is when the song is playing you go one two three four one two three four one two three cue play you see and then boom then you start playing you know and uh, you start playing your song then you have a, a good transition so that's that's just a basic tip on also djing so knowing how to count bars guys if you didn't know it's really an advantage and you know it will help you arrange your tracks much easier and it will even help you also uh work with other artists as well and producers much easier because you can talk about counting music the right way in bars so if you have any more questions about this i might have left something out or you want to add something you know you can put it down there in the comments i know this is going to help a lot of you guys and you know um that's what i want to do here on the channel so thank you guys so much for watching this video i know it's a different video from the ones i usually do but i feel like this is necessary so that you guys don't miss out on important things like this so thank you guys so much for watching i hope this really helps you if you're new here remember to subscribe down below and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on my future uploads thank you guys so much for watching I'm X and I'm out. Peace.